Everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering One, checking in team number 5460 Strike Zone, coming in from Michigan. I'm here with Lily and Nathaniel, and they have an awesome robot here. Strike Zone's been building great robots for years now. Just watch one of their matches, wickedly accurate uh, in their matches as well. So, of course, we'll be taking that full cargo journey through the robot. I want you to pay attention to their venting system that they have, uh, some really cool programming that goes into how everything is automated. So, all this and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in first. First alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in robotics scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first chose to go to Kettering University at kettering.edu. So Nathaniel, we're going to start out with the intake on your robot. Talk to me about what's gone into it uh, and some of the materials and any iterations as well. Um, so we've had a couple different iterations and a lot of prototyping. But how this works is it starts up in a match, and at the beginning of the match, it's run by these pistons and chain, and the chain rotates and pushes them down, and we, start, and we have two rollers on it. We have this top one to stop bouncing balls, and there's a bottom one with two-inch mechanum wheels to filter them into these two-inch compliant wheels and this middle stealth wheel. And so they filter the balls into our hopper, and then if we ever want to bring them up, just the reverse of the chain, and it pulls them right up. Fair enough. So the uh, the top area here, that's just meant to knock the cargo down. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's meant to stop bouncing balls because we noticed that the balls take a long time to stop. So we wanted something to kind of control that. Well, let's keep moving on and going into your indexing system. Very excited to talk about the uh, venting mechanism that you have uh, and then some of the automation that's gone into it, Lily. So one of the things that we knew that we wanted to do is that we wanted to filter the colored balls for which alliance color we were. So we had to kind of make this indexing system that could do everything that we wanted. So we have a color sensor right down here that senses this, the color of the balls that we're intaking. And we have a vent that shoots them out in the back depending on what we detect. So if we're red alliance from the FMS station, it detects that we have a red ball and it goes straight up through to this hopper because we have these um, solenoids in the bottom so that it shoots them right up and then we can just index them and shoot them out the way that we need to. But then on the back, if we sense a blue ball and we're FMS Alliance Station Red, then it shoots them out the back and it puts those solenoids down. That way they can flow through from the start to the finish and out. And then we also have this little kicker here. That way it gives them some bounce. That way they might be more difficult for other um, opposing alliances to try to pick up for. Can we see a couple of pieces of cargo come through and we'll, we'll take a look at uh, how yeah. that works? From your indexing system on here, talk to me about any more sensors or automation that, what, that went into this. Yeah, so with our indexing system, we have three sensors on it. We have a color sensor right over here, and we have two beam brakes. So the beam brakes are kind of a new addition, but not really. So that way, when we have beam brakes, and it senses that two, both of the beam brakes are broken, and we have two balls, the intakes won't spin at all. It'll kind of cut off that function. That way, we never have the opportunity to accidentally index more than two balls at a time. Well, as we go up into your shooter, uh, the accuracy that I witnessed in your last match was just dead on. No matter where you were, picking up almost immediate shots coming out. So talk to me about uh, some of the programming that's gone into that and, of course, the mechanical features too. Yeah, so with the, with the shooter, we have quite a bit of math that goes into it. We have about three fail-safes, which kind of helps with a lot of our accuracy issues. So we have a limelight, first and foremost, to try to um, target the target as much as possible. But we do have um, instances where maybe the mount broke or the lights burn out, which we've had happen before and we don't really want that to happen again. So we did math that based on our gyro position, we get our position on the field in a quadrant system so that we know where we are and like, okay, if we're in quadrant two, then we have to subtract this and add that and everything like that or multiply this by negative one so that in the case that the limelight does fail, then we know where we are on the field and can target where we are and just target towards the position. Where was a, a turret from a priority standpoint when you looked at the game, you're like, hey, was this, we have to have a turret sort of thing or where was that kind of in the hierarchy of everything? We definitely knew that we needed a turret because we definitely wanted to try to shoot on the fly as much as possible because with the limited amount of cargo, we feel that it's necessary to be able to shoot from most places on the field. And for us to do that accurately was to do a turret, which we have experience in. 
So it wasn't anything too different than what we were used to. So as we start to wrap up on this robot, let's talk about your climber, uh, what's gone into that. And uh, once again, looking at, uh, from the game itself, was traversal rung the, one of the big priorities that you needed to accomplish this year? Yeah, so we knew we had to get through that traversal if we wanted the ranking point. So this is our second iteration, and how it works is we have this elevator, and it goes up and down, and when it hits the bars, these spring down and spring back up. We winch it down, it pulls the robot up, then these can pivot out. You want to pivot them out? Yeah, so these arms can pivot out, and it's similar to a 2021 climber, just a um, vertical climber with the tube. And so it pivots out all the way out, and when we're ready to winch, we bring it down, which locks the robot in place, and the robot is pivoted so we can keep putting the elevator out and repeating this process to climb all the way up to the traversal. Well, Strikezone, once again, has been making great robots every year, so thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot this year. Uh, good luck here at Kettering 1, and of course, throughout the rest of the competition season. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.